Note, my sanity was evaporated long before this video was even made, so I should be fine in making this video. Boss battles are pretty awesome. They come at the time where you get the opportunity to test your skills on what you've learned so far within the game. Unfortunately, there are THOSE bosses. The ones that suck the big one and completely annoy you to death. Bosses are, for the most part, some of the best parts of video games. Standing up to a challenge that tests your skills and makes you feel accomplished. But when bosses that completely suck show up, it ruins the experience for you. I'm here today to list off my least favorite boss battles of all time. Now keep in mind that I will be including final bosses on this list because they can be the worst part about a game. Also keep in mind that if you like any of these bosses, that is completely fine. In fact, not everyone is going to have the same experience with the boss, let alone an entire game. What may seem like an annoying intrusion to one could be a fun challenge to another. And keep in mind that these are my least favorite, not the worst. Some of these bosses could have no technical issues at all. It's just my own personal experience that caused them to be on here. As always, only one per franchise and only from games I've played. So no Silver the Hedgehog from Sonic 06. Anyways, let's just get this over with. Mario! You again? Don't you ever give up? Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! Okay, so to start off the list is a fight that isn't bad, I just don't like it because of how bullshittingly difficult it is. Which is strange, because in the early version of this fight, it was really easy. Well, that doesn't really make any sense. Anyways, I'm talking about Tate and Liza from Pokemon Emerald. Like I said, I don't like this fight because of its stupidly unfair difficulty. But as far as a technical standpoint, it's probably the best one on here because it was actually the first gym battle that implemented the new double battle system introduced in Gen 3. I can appreciate this fact, if it wasn't for the fight's bullshit difficulty. The Ruby and Sapphire versions are pathetically easy as all they have are a Soul Rock and Lunatone. But in Emerald, they add a Clay Doll and a Zatu to their team, and this is where things get hard. If you're not at the appropriate level, like five levels above them, the Clay Doll and the Zatu will be gigantic pains in the ass for you, as they don't go down very easily. The Zatu will use Psychic a lot, which kinda hurts. Plus, the Zatu is usually faster, so it'll land its hits and then most likely kill you before you can attack it. Plus, the Clay Doll knows Earthquakes, so any types of Pokémon that you have that are weak against that, yeah, you're fucked there as well. The only thing that keeps this fight from being any higher is that it WAS the first double battle gym, and it gets easy after the Clay Doll and Zatu are defeated. Well then, let's move on to the really bad stuff. HOW DARE YOU DISTURB MY FAMILY VACATION! <laughs> Okay, Super Smash Bros. Brawl had a pretty... interesting story mode. Some people didn't really care for it, some people hated it, and some people liked it. I personally didn't really mind it. It was a passable attempt, but hardly anyone shows any emotion and develops as a character, with exceptions being Lucas and DDD. And the story itself didn't really make too much sense, but I still think for its flaws, it did have its moments that make it passable. But there is one major flaw with it, and that being the main villain, Taboo. He just comes right out of nowhere, and he's never mentioned again. You know, big-lipped alligator moment. And his fight was... disappointing. As if bosses coming out of nowhere wasn't bad enough, but if the fight itself isn't that great, then there's a problem. I mean, all that's happening is that you're hitting him, and he teleports around. I mean, you don't get too much out of fighting game bosses, but there were some really good fights in this game, like Rayquaza and Porky. But Taboo doesn't really do anything special. I mean, for a final boss, it's nothing to stand out, and Taboo himself isn't all that great. As said before, he just comes out of nowhere and reveals himself as the main villain towards the end and doesn't really do anything too significant towards the plot except turn everyone into trophies. For what purpose again? No, seriously, what was the purpose of turning people into trophies? I don't believe they ever fucking mentioned it. And now that I think about it, the fight is actually kind of bland as well. Next, please. 
How dare you disturb my family vacation! <laughs> Next up, we have a boss that's a gigantic version of a regular enemy. And I agree with you, Scotty, when you say that the fight with Baron Burr is just stupid. Seriously, it's only a giant version of those ice enemies that were throughout the level. And the defeat method is exactly the same as the other enemies. You just have to use a spin attack three times, and the battle is over. Even though you can get knocked off the platform that this guy is on, it doesn't really hinder your chances of success. Though I can appreciate the fact that the ice flower is used, as I thought that was a pretty good power-up. But that's about it. Now, there wasn't really anything funny in this segment, so here's a random musical number. I am Mario, I have an ice flower, I use it to climb up your tower, I will kick your ass, you will die, I am coming for you, Baron Burr, I use spin attack, you go down quick, I am done now. How dare you disturb my family vacation! <laughs> Okay, this is where things get bad. And I mean levels of giant stacks of pancakes with that one cake that slips over the edge and lands on your face. And then the rest of them land on you also for whatever reason. And I can't believe that some people actually like this fight, but once again, that's perfectly fine. Anyways, Kingdom Hearts 2 had some really awesome boss battles, from the fight with Roxas to the very awesome final boss fight with Xemnas and even Luxord. But there's a couple of... iffy fights. Like our next boss on the list, Demix. Demix is a hydrokinesis who has the ability to create water clones that attack you. This sounds cool on paper, but the execution is very poor. Why? Well, when he summons the clones, you have to defeat them in a certain amount of time. Doesn't sound so bad, right? Well, it is. Demix does this four times. The first time, you have to destroy 50 forms in 40 seconds. The other three times, it's 10 forms in 10 seconds. 10 forms in 10 seconds! The main problem with this is you have to be fast when destroying these. You probably won't start destroying them until 7 seconds into the time limit. And if you fail this, you have to start the fight all over again. Are you fucking kidding me? That is total bullshit! Yeah, if you fail to kill all the water forms in the amount of time given, you have to start the entire fight over again. See, this is something that I hate! It's totally understandable that when you die because you run out of health, you have to start the fight over. But when it's something as bullshit as fucking killing things on a 10 second time limit, I can't help but despise it. Though, what keeps this fight from being any higher is Demix's personality. I actually like it, and he makes me laugh with all his goofy moments, including his reaction to being beaten. No way! Oh. <laughs> Kinda of funny. Just like Roxas' reaction to Shion's death. Who else will I have ice cream with? <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> Note, out of context, this line is completely silly and kinda of stupid, but in context, it actually has deep meaning behind it. Go ask if City's fan what it means. How dare you disturb my family vacation! <laughs> The Legend of Zelda series is one of my favorite franchises of all time. The music, the dungeons, the characters, and the majority of the bosses are just fantastic. Keyword there being majority. The series also has a couple of duds when it comes to boss fights. In fact, this segment is a tie. The two bosses that I despise the most in this otherwise fantastic franchise are Moldorm from A Link to the Past and Georg from Majora's Mask. I guess I'll start with a former, Moldorm, or as I like to call him, Trolldorm! This is one of the most infamous fights in the Zelda series because of what Trolldorm has the capabilities of doing to you. What you have to do in this fight is attack its tail. While this might not sound so difficult, it's harder than it looks as Trolldorm will move faster after each attack you land on him, and when he hits you, you get set flying towards the edge, and then fall off the floor below and start the fight over. And the absolute best part is any hearts you picked up will not be available to pick up again. But now let's move on to the other half of this dreadfulness, Georg. Or as I like to call him, the boss that completely ruined my experience with the Great Bay Temple! Oh god, I fucking hate this place so much, and the boss just adds to that hate. I'll probably talk about that topic later, but right now, let's rip into Gjord. You have to shoot at Gjord while he's in the water, and then whenever he's stunned, you go into the water as Zora Link and attack him from there. Sometimes you might attack him, and sometimes you might not because you missed him by a little bit or you weren't quick enough. 
if you're in the water for too long, Georg will eat you and take away a whole two hearts of damage. Yeah, two fucking hearts. Are you goddamn serious? You'll probably have around ten hearts at this point, so you can only get hit five times. But the biggest reason why I hate this fight so much is because when I first played this game, I didn't beat Georg in time. So I had to play the Song of Time and start from the first day and undo all of my progress on that temple. And I will fully say this, that whenever I had to do that, I literally broke down in tears. I'm not even joking, it was that devastating to me that I had to do the entire temple over again. And also get those fucking stray fairies again. And all this happened only because I couldn't beat this fucking boss! Fuck both of these fights for being cheap ways of killing me in the process. That's why their deaths are more satisfying because of how bullshit they are. How dare you disturb my family vacation! <laughs> Nope, I don't really dislike this fight as much as I used to. It's really easy, but not that much of a problem to me. No, the fight from Metal Gear Solid 3 that I'm thinking of is the fight with Colonel Volgan. God damn it, fuck this fucking fight. I really hate this fight. I fucking hate it! So, if you couldn't tell, I kinda dislike this fight. Mainly because every time Colonel Vulcan hits you with his short-range lightning attack, all of your bullets get ejected. And whenever you manage to actually take him down some way, if you want to shoot him with that same weapon, you have to reload it, giving him time to get up and continue attacking you. Plus, his attacks are kinda unpredictable in terms of where they're going to land. You're not sure where it's gonna go, and therefore you could possibly panic and then get hit by the attack anyways. This is once again my own personal experience, and not everyone is going to have the same one. However, this fight has one major redeeming factor. After this fight is the battle with the Shagglehot, and let's say I kinda like that fight. Oh yeah, shooting down bad guys on a motorcycle! Yeah, infinite ammo! The treads! The fucking treads! Fried by a bolt lightning! Die, you son of a bitch! How dare you disturb my family vacation! Okay, since most people have already ripped the shit out of this fight, I'll just give a really fast explanation as to why Jasper Bat Jr. is a terrible fight. Jasper himself is an asshole as he killed Travis's best friend at the beginning of the second game. He also makes you think that he killed Henry, Sylvia, and Shinobu right before the fight. It is easily the worst fight in the entire series. One, because Jasper constantly yells in that annoying voice of his, and two, it has an unfair difficulty. You could get knocked out through the window and have to start the fight over. Suda purposefully made this fight the way it is to symbolize that revenge is never satisfying. This entire fight leading up to it was based on an optional side quest in the first game. The only good part about this fight is the music. Next segment, please, because there is nothing left to talk about. How dare you disturb my family vacation! <laughs> If you had asked me what the best game I played in 2014 was, I'd definitely say it was Persona 4 without a second thought. I mean, holy shit, before any gameplay had happened, i.e. the first cutscene, I already liked the game. I can definitely appreciate when a game has cutscenes that are different from the gameplay. Gee, it sure is boring around here. Except that. That was terrible. Persona 4 not only had some great visuals, but some really awesome characters. I mean, they feel like actual people. The voice acting is just that fluid. They all sound like that they could actually be real people, having real-like responses. What you're really asking is, Will you please beat the shit out of me, Kanji? But that's enough of the characters for now, because that'll be a topic for another video. Anyways, the bosses in this game were also really awesome. Special mentions going to Yukiko, Teddy, and my personal favorite fight in the entire game, Kanji. And frankly, I haven't beaten the real final boss, and I don't think I'll attempt soon, because even though this game was 66 hours well spent, I don't think I'll do it again. There is a boss that I absolutely despise. Well, since I brought up Persona 4, you all saw it coming. It's Shadow Mitsuo. Seriously, what the fuck? This fight is terrible for many reasons. One, Mitsuo himself. You never really saw Mitsuo at all up until this point in the game. He was there at the beginning, only to hit on Yukiko, but then as the story progresses, people are killed and the group is having trouble finding out who it is. When you get to this retro area, you find out that it's Mitsuo who had been killing everyone the whole time, including King Moron. He said that he had done it for the fame so that people would know him. And then you later find out that he only actually killed King Moron and just claimed to kill the other two victims, which makes him even more of an asshole with that last statement. 
Seriously, using someone's death to claim your own fame? Fuck that shit. Two, the boss gets two attacks per turn. Why does this boss have two attacks? Why? All the other bosses only have one attack per turn. Who thought this was a good idea? Why should this fucker get two attacks? I can understand if it was the final boss and it happened on a set pattern, but no. Shadow Mitsuo gets two attacks every single fucking turn. And three. Every once in a while, he will regenerate his outer shell that takes the longest fucking time to destroy. If this only stayed at the beginning as a start off by destroying the outer shell only once at the beginning, then this would have been perfectly fine. But nope, this happens three fucking times. Why, goddammit? Why? This is fucking bullshit! Seriously, Mitsuo is already a bad enough character, but when he's got a shit boss fight, there's a fucking problem. All of the shadow bosses of the group members were great, and I kinda liked the Kunino Sagari fight. At least that had a triumphant feeling in the end, depending on what ending you got. But no, Shadow Mitsuo is just fucking terrible. And to think, there's two more bosses worse than this! How dare you disturb my family vacation! <laughs> Ah yes, Conker's Bad Fur Day, such a delightful little rareware platformer that managed to get rated M due to literally everything in the game. But we're not here to talk about the game, we're here for the boss battles. This game's selection of bosses are pretty unique. I mean, a Haybot that makes fun of the Terminator, a caveman where the defeat method is to bite him in both the dick and ass, a bat where you feed him too much until he drops into his own trap, a very awesome fight against a giant monster that you fight in a tank, and quite literally, SHIT! But this game's final boss is... terrible. I'll give it credit for being a xenomorph, but the execution is just awful. See, when I played this game, it was on an emulator. Now tell me, would you really be that angry with me for this game? I mean, it's pretty fucking expensive for an actual cartridge of the game. Emulator scrub. Why I bring this up is whenever I got to the awesome matrix section, it slowed down. Like, 20 frames per second slow. I didn't have that bad of a time with the matrix section, but the battle with Heinrich was a very bad experience for me. I had kept dying over and over again, and it was so slow and took the longest freaking time to get back to where I was. But what you do in this fight is punch Heinrich three times to knock it out, then you grab its tail to spin it around and throw it out an open window and into space. The problem is that you can miss successfully throwing Heinrich into space and have to do it all over again. Plus it can be really frustrating when he hits you with his tail and knocks you over, especially if you're only one hit from dying and he hits you. Plus, there are no healing items in this boss battle! Even though this fight has a funny ending, that still doesn't excuse the poor control of this terrible boss fight. Well then, let's move on and finally finish this fiasco. What could be worse than a stupid face CEO leader who kills your friend and launches you out of windows? What could be worse than some asshole who claims others to death for their own beneficiaries and gets two turns per attack? What could be worse than- Get on with it! Yes! Get on with it! Yes! Okay, okay, fine! And really, I do say this with all honesty, if you like this fight, that is completely fine. I have no problem with it, but I am sorry, Scotty. I am sorry, Obsidious fan. I just don't see how anyone could think the fight with Bazaran from Shadow of the Colossus is good in any way possible! Taking into account that there's really only three bosses in this game that I'd say I don't really like is quite a thing. I mean, you've got amazing colossi battles with Avion, Phalanx, Valus, Argus, and Malice. But then you have shit like Bazaran, which is the reason why I could see people's complaints with this game. So in this fight, you have to lure Bazaran over to a geyser and flip him over so you can shoot at his feet and then climb on top of him. The only Problem being EVERYTHING! Luring Bazaran over to a geyser is difficult enough, but sometimes it'll just pass right through him and you'll have to find another geyser to flip him over to. But sometimes he'll be standing in a different location and the geyser won't even make contact whatsoever. And then, <laughs> this is the best part. Bazaran can shoot you with his fucking lightning powers if you're standing still and completely screw you over. But whenever you do manage to finally flip Bazaran over with a geyser, you have to be really quick to shoot at not one, but two fucking feet. 
then you have to get on aggro and race over to the other side and climb on him. But if you're too slow, you have to do all of that bullshit over again. Are you fucking serious? And here's another problem. Whenever I played through this game recently on timed attack, it took me 15 minutes to actually get on Bazaran. Well, the time that you're actually supposed to defeat Bazaran with is NINE MINUTES! SERIOUSLY?! You know there's a fucking problem when you finally get on the Colossi six minutes after you're supposed to kill it. And the sad thing is that because this is such a bullshit fight, it's actually satisfying to kill Bazaran. But that's the thing. Killing these colossal giants isn't supposed to feel satisfying. It's supposed to make you question whether any of this is right or not. The only plus side to this fight is the music is good, but that's not saying much since all the music in this game is pretty fantastic. But the fight after this is dirge and that's a good fight. Well, how about after that? No, oh, fuck that!